Coast Hip Hop. Uh, I'm sitting here texting my guests. Man, y'all ain't believe who I got today, folks. I, yeah, I know my boy Orange Juice, Orange Juice Jones was supposed to stop through. Call me. Hey, man, I'm sorry, Doc. I'm on a movie set. I got caught up. I can't do it till Monday. I'm going to do a special edition show on Monday. Um, I was sitting at my desk. I called Dusty. Dusty hadn't responded yet. I know he's probably working. And I got a call from my girl, Silky D. Silky D, uh, queen of West Coast hip hop. And she said, I got somebody I want to speak to you. Now, normally I don't talk to people right before my show. This is my guest. Didn't know this is going to be my guest today. I ain't going to tell you who it is just yet. I'm going to let him pop in. Um, he said he had to make a couple of moves right quick. But in the, on this, in the world of live shows, you got to come on when you say you're going to come on. Because if not, all your links go away. And you got to start all over again. You got to re email everybody and blah, blah, blah. So I will start the show without my guest just to make sure I ain't got to do double work and get everybody confused. I'm sitting there waiting on my guest. Brother, man, uh, this is one of them brothers that um, kind of started, kind of been with me for a minute, and we had some misunderstanding in the past, and uh, somehow or another, he had a total revelation and uh, called me today, man, and said, hey, man, you know, I need to holler at you, dude. And I'm like, huh? I'm not going to tell you who it is till you get on the show, okay? I'm not going to do that yet. I got about five people here right now. I want you all to stick around for a minute. Uh, this brother is a very significant part of West Coast hip-hop. Um, you know, if I keep talking, I'm going to give it away. I just hit him, on the, I hit him on the phone. I just text him again, make sure he's, you know, he, uh, he got the link. But um, it was really amazing that he called me today when he called me. Like I said before, Owen called me up a little while and said, man, I'm stuck in the set. I can't get away. I'm, you know, I'm about to have a makeup, whatever the case may be. And I didn't have a guest book for today. I got one for next week, though. I got a hot guest. I got a dope guest for next week, y'all. I got a real dope guest. Call me today, confirmed. Uh, as you can see, man, the, uh, the caliber of guests is starting to pick up more and more because people are trying to feel what I'm doing. And I really appreciate y'all for watching and supporting the show. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad y'all buying my books and my comic books and keep you know just make things happen. I'm pretty much a one man operation over whether y'all believe it or not. Well, I'm sorry, I got a couple of folks that help me, but when it comes to the podcast on Thursday, I'm a one man operation. I'm doing it by myself. Dusty helps me on Tuesday. He keeps my channel running. Much love to Dusty Vision. Y'all keep supporting Dusty because D Dusty keeps supporting me. Uh, on Thursdays, it's just me, you, and this camera and this laptop I'm sitting in front of, and uh, so. I make phone calls, people call, you know, I make things happen. And today, this is somebody just looking out. Hey, man, I need to call that brother right quick and holler at him. And I can't wait till he chimes in. I'm going to call him again just to make sure we're all right. He got all the information. Let me see what he say here. This is him calling me. Uh, uh, yeah, that ain't him just yet. So I'm, I'm waiting for a minute, folks. I'm waiting. This is, only, this is the only part about... Being live, that um, can be a little frustrating because sometimes people got things to do and they, they don't come when they're supposed to. But this one right here, he got a total pass. because This whole thing was set up within about 15 minutes ago. It wasn't supposed to happen today at 5 o'clock. It wasn't supposed to happen at 5.30. I was sitting at my desk trying to figure out how I was going to make this show happen today because I like staying consistent. Consistency is the key on YouTube or any other social social media platform, whether it be a podcast or YouTube. Consistency is the key. So when you uh, have action at doing something, I mean, you know, even if, even if uh, Orange didn't come today, I was going to do something. I was going to do a Alonzo Live, talk about Dre and his uh, $300,000 a month child support. I mean, hey, man, you know, that's that's that's, that's all over social media. Wonder how y'all feel about that. I feel that's a, that's a good deal, okay? That's a good deal. Based on what he's working with, that's a good deal. I'm going to feel how my guests feel about it, too. Um, but right now, I'm just trying to get my guests online to figure where he at. Um, come and hit him again. Make sure everything is straight. He told me he was coming. Said he might have to do some adjustments right quick. Um, I'm going to hit him again just to make sure. Because this, this technology, sometimes people get a little caught up. Please leave your message for me. All right, he didn't answer the phone, so I'm 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 thinking he he waiting on me. Okay, all right, he's coming. Anyway, folks, 
Uh, like I always say, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him what you got planned. And God, he, God works in mysterious ways, but he's always working. Okay, I've asked this brother, I've reached out for this brother in the past. I couldn't get him on the phone. But today, out of the clear blue sky, he has called me up, said he had some things to say to me. And I'm going to share them with y'all today, folks. I'm going to share them with y'all. It's gonna, it should be an interesting show. This should be an interesting show. All I got to do is get his ass here. <laughs> in the meantime, folks, who we got, who we got in the chat room right now? Um, uh, what up? Uh, my, I see my man. Montana Max in the house, AJ, Ray Brown, Gary Cummins. What up, folks? Uh, Texas Cyclone, what's up with you? Um, thanks for the great advice, Lonzo. You got a doc and the content. Much love, folks. Um, this is how we do it, man. I'm a grown-ass man, doc. If I don't drop some game on you, who the fuck is going to do it? If I don't drop some real game on you, who is? And I talk to a lot of youngsters, you know, I deal with a lot of youngsters all the time, and they felt, they feel that the generation, my generation, kind of dropped the ball on them. And in some in some ways, we did. A lot of us tried to uh, do the drug thing, got caught up in prison, uh, got caught up in the gang situation. And, you know, them 80s and 90s, a lot of folks never came back home again and uh, left a lot, of, a lot of information about life and about these streets a lot of folks didn't get. I was one of them lucky cats. I had a bunch of old dudes in my life forever, from my dad to my uncles, uh, the club owner, Jeff D. Much loved him. Rest in peace. Rest in peace my dad. Old man, Dootsy from Dootos Music Center, Skateland, Craig, the white boy from Skateland, always dropping some shit on me. So, game, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a street saying, game is to be sold and not told. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And nobody charged me a dime. It cost me a little bit sometimes, but for the most part, you got to pass a lot of this shit on. Because you know, if you don't pass it down, when you check up out of here, all that knowledge goes with you. They say when an old person dies, a senior citizen dies, a whole library of information might as well burn down as well. When an old person dies, a library of information might as well just burn down too. Because there's things you can ask me today that I might, if you ask me certain, certain about certain things. It may be stored back in my mind, and I don't talk about it on the show, but if you ask me about certain situations, it's a trigger, and I can go into a whole detail about certain things. A lot of things I talk about, like child support and baby mama drama and stuff like that, that's that's in the, that's in the front part. But some things, like dealing with certain certain aspects of business, gets tucked away in the back like an old file. But I'm waiting on my guests, and um, I'm just trying to keep it, keep, trying to keep you all in suspense. To listen my, to my guest pops up, pop up my screen here. I, where is he at? Where is he at? I told him six o'clock. It's six ten. I know he was he was kind of fumbling. Um, let me call my folks up. Make sure uh, we got everything straight. This, this this is some ghetto shit, but don't worry about it. It's gonna be a good show though. The show is worth it. Yeah, you talk to him and make sure we straight. Okay, I, I, well, let me see. He, he got, I sent him a link. I sent, sent, called him and told him to check his email and click that link, and he'll come online. All right, baby, hit me back. All right. Little technical difficulty. Ain't no big thing. Little technical difficulty. I had to call my, my folks to make sure everybody got it straight. Lonzo, did you uh, did you hear, hurt deep when Yellow and Dre abandoned your situation? You know what, man? Um, I did. I did. Uh, I was. I was. I was I was not hurt deep. I was disappointed. Um, because you know when you when you roll with somebody, get people started, roll with them from from the very beginning, and almost give them their dreams. Everybody had a dream, and I help I help make dreams come true. Their dreams come true, and then they left. Um, for me, I think the biggest the biggest difference was my house was abandoned. Okay, because at one point. Everybody would be here on a regular basis. My house was like a version of house party all the time. I wasn't married at the time. My, my daughter was my daughter was a teenager. She didn't live with me though. And I got this big old house. I got jacuzzis. I we were doing clubs. We were doing concerts. And everybody would be here around here. And then as we split up, it's like still some people came through, but if I wasn't here, wasn't nobody here. 
And back then, if uh, my my roommate would be here, I had a tenant, uh, she would be here. She was cool with Dre and them. So she would be here. So I'd come home, people would be here. So I went from being a full house to like an empty nest type situation. And um, yeah, it kind, of, it kind of stung a little bit. It kind of stung a little bit. But, uh, you know, I got over it. Because uh, at one point in time, it started costing me money. Uh, and that's, a, that's when Jerry Heller came in to play. And like, hey, dude, you want to feel sorry for yourself? Or you want to go get this money? Because one thing they did, people forget, they left me with a hit record. <laughs> they didn't leave. They left me with a hit record. Turn off lights. Had just jumped off. We, we broke up in November of 86, uh, January 87. Turn off lights was a hit. So I didn't have much time to really feel sorry for myself. I was you know, a, little, a little disappointed, but uh, yeah, it, it had an effect on me, Doc. Um, I feel you, if you do a movie, you make sure you show that part. You know what, man? Um, I definitely will show that part because it was a major part. It, it, you know, <sighs> when you go from, uh, it's like having an empty nest sort of syndrome. You got, you got five, six kids in the house, all of a sudden everybody go to college. And then you stick around here, you got this big ass house, Ain't nobody but you and the dog, okay? I ain't had no dog. So, yes, it was a, I, I suffered from the empty nest syndrome, okay? My roommate got a spot. Um, the Uzi brothers got their spot, and, you know, Dre them moved on. And um, I'm still slanging records, so I wasn't home as much. And when I came home, that's, I think that's probably what the biggest difference. When I came home, wasn't nobody around here. And that's when it kind of hit me, because I was always running around. And when I came home, I'd come home, be seven, eight people in the house. Dre in the studio, yell in the studio, whoever, whoever was doing what. Um, and that just, you know, that just, when you come home, all of a sudden, ain't nobody here. Dust everywhere, it's just a big, big ass difference. Lonzo, MC8 had a great discussion, uh, cleared up the rumors. You know what? We sure did, man. We sure did. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, it wasn't even a rumor. It just somebody got some wrong information. That's all. They just got some wrong information. People always associate me and unknown DJ together. Now unknown DJ don't do interviews. He don't do none of the podcasts. He won't even do my own podcast. My podcast. What up, John? And uh, somebody got it twisted as usual. Lonzo did this to MC8, and and they, they brought it to me on on this podcast on, on my own show. And eight heard about it, and he said, "No, nah, we I didn't say that, Lonzo." I said, I know you didn't, Doc. And we just went, I went on the Gangster Chronicles and just clarified it and dropped some game about the music industry. You know, the music industry is like that, um, it's like that devil, man, that people just love. It's like, like the mermaid. You ever see mermaid movies? And the mermaid be beautiful, they be fine, and they tell you, come in the water, and as soon as your ass get in the water, they attack your ass. Duh. That's what happens in the music game. Music the game is the same way, folks. Everybody wants to be in it until you get in it. It's like, damn! All the parties, all the pretty girls, the models. And, and nowadays, that's just like standard equipment. You're going to see a bunch of models. You're going to see a bunch of a bunch of weed, a bunch of alcohol. Everybody's going to be popping bottles, turned up. But then you look up two or, three, two or three years later, and the money ain't right. The money ain't right. You ain't hot no more. And the, the biggest... The biggest addiction in the music industry, in the entertainment game, is attention. You heard me right. Not the money. It's the attention that you get. You, ha It's like when you walk into a room and everybody's singing your praises and everybody's in love with you, all of a sudden, nobody's fucking with you no more. And that, 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 man, that, that, that fuck with people. And for me, I've been blessed. I was a DJ, had nightclubs before, before I got famous. So nightclubs are my methadone. All right, folks, I see him. I see him on the screen. Let me bring him in, folks. You, Hey, Doc, I see you, but I don't see you. Can you hear me? Uh, Hey Doc, can you, I, I see him on the screen. I don't know the song didn't say you called, you, did, you, you didn't answer. Hey, this song didn't say, I missed that one. All right, I see my man on the screen, I'm trying to get him on here, folks. Might be a little, I, he's, he's, he's here. 
He's here, but he's not visible yet. Might be some adjustments he got to make on his camera right quick or on his phone. Not sure where he called him from. He said, I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. Make sure I'm, I'm, I'm loud and clear. Yeah, I'm loud and clear. Uh, y'all came, y'all still can't see who it is either. <laughs> Stick around. Don't go nowhere. It's going to be an interesting show, Doc. I don't want to say nothing until he's on the screen. I want to give it away. And his name not even appearing up on the screen. That's even crazier. His name is not appearing up on the screen. He's going to call back. Look how he's going to come back, folks. Yeah, my guest is trying to, ch trying to ch uh, ch uh, chime in. Um, let me see here. What they say? Let's go. What up, Lonzo? Unknown Raider guy. Hey, Lonzo. In his song, didn't he say you called? You called. You didn't answer. I called. In the song, didn't he say, I called you and you didn't answer? In his song, didn't he call? Um, Sir Jake's joint. Okay, here we go, folks. Here we go. I can hear you, Lonzo. There, there he is. What up, Doc? Lonzo, can you hear me? I got you, baby. Yes, sir. My guest today, folks. What up, OG? One of the real yeah, OG yeah. stereo crew. My man, my nerves, okay? But I ain't got nothing to love for him. I got my man, Sir G. Sir G, Stereo Crew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rose Q, Grace Cousin, producer. My man, if you hear his uh, story from Long Beach, uh, the Kelvin told me his story about his participation in, in uh, Long Beach. I was blown out. G, holla at me, boy. Hey, what up, Lonzo? I'm good, Doc. I'm good. I'm good man. It's always good to talk to you, brother. Man, it's been you a minute. Old, and, 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 and like I said, me coming into this situation with you is not about what happened. It's about what you actually did. And a lot of people kept telling me, quit worrying about what happened and worry about what he did. So that's why I'm on here. To tell everybody what you actually did, let alone, you know, we Thank all you. make mistakes. I appreciate that, Doc. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Doc. I appreciate that. One thing I got to say anything that happened back in the One day is because I was blind leading the blind. Okay? And it was never any intention of doing anything to mislead anybody, take advantage of anybody. I got tell people all the time. I work for my house. Hey, 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 your your uh, transmission is kind of breaking up, but hey, you can't tell me you done nothing no wrong. And um, we all have lived off of your wrongs and off of your rights. We we we, we all have uh, came to a, a real world where you even caring because what me and you were talking about was are you going to be a part of the wrecking crew? Are you going to be a part of Uncle Jam's army? And uh, I, I roll with the wrecking crew. Um. Uh, Why'd you come to Wrecking Crew, man? Excuse me? Why'd you come with the Wrecking Crew? Why'd you come with the Wrecking Crew? Because my cousin. Okay. okay. Well, that's Dr. Who Dre, you're Dr. Dr. Dre put me up, and I was, what was we off of, Maine? What was that, San Pedro, your first house? Yeah, uh, Maine. Yeah. Uh, right. And, that's, and I was telling people that Lonzo was loaning out equipment. At that time, and and people people don't know. I was like, you know, Lonzo was renting out equipment at that time, so he you were you were the east side of Roger Clayton, and and Roger Clayton was on the west side, but um, you definitely did it with the um um the the penthouse, and then. What was what was first, the penthouse or 
it was two of them in that same spot. Eve at the dark to the penthouse. The penthouse was first, right? No, Eve. No, Eve. Oh, I thought the penthouse in that corner, I was 15 years old. Wow. When wow. Dre used to bring me there, up there in the corner, a thing. I thought the penthouse was first, but you telling me that Eve after dark was actually first. That's amazing. Eve first. Eve first. I, I trust you on that guy. Was Cube with us back then? No. That, I didn't think so. Nah. I was I was the kid it, behind Andre, and you was mad that he was bringing kids around your establishment. That's what you was mad at. <laughs> you got to be in trouble one time, right? Excuse me? You got to be in trouble one time. Oh, I don't know that, but uh, I'm sure it, it should have. Because I was talking to KK from Second to None. He said he was there too at the same time. And he two lids lord me, and he know everything that happened at Eve After Dark. He know everything. So you are a guy that uh, people looked up to, regardless on who you think you are as a person. But... Um, you did uh, start people's understanding to be better. And you taught me to be better. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yes. What made you call me today? Excuse me? What made you call me today? Um, Because me and one of my friends, um, Silky D, always wanted me to do your... Um, your podcast, and I don't do podcasts because I, I don't really care. And um, one of my homeboys said that just because somebody did something wrong to you don't mean that you should hold them to that. And 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 when I got with um, Silky, she always wanted me to do it. And I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do Lonzo stuff because he had his chance with me. And I, I gave up on uh, on the evil that comes with this music industry. I gave up on it. And I, I, I want to talk to you. And I don't want to talk about what you did wrong. I want to talk about what you did right. What I do right? You did, a, you did do a lot right. Thank you. Cheers. In your eyes, what do you think I did the best? In your eyes, what do you think I did that was best that worked best for you guys? Well, you got to remember at the time we was doing we was doing that was like erotic city, like Prince and um, and um, oh, ready for the world. Like we're coming into a transition at that time. And you came from the technical side and didn't know that we, Dr. Dre brought me and Cuban that we was going to be a part of a next situation. You didn't know the next situation was going to go on. Right. But you did right. know something. Now, we talked about your we talked about you with Long Beach also. Tell them about your connection with Long Beach. Hey, your, your, your phone is Long, gonna say it again. Your Long Beach connection. Oh, me and Calvin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Calvin is my guy. I wanted to come on your show, tell you that you are a Al Bell. You are. Uh, I know all. I know all the leaders. The Suge Knights. The um. All the people you 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 are you are one of these people, and and, and they were, you know, Al Bell, yeah. and you know, uh, who, who was Solar? Who's from Solar? Dick Griffey. Dick Griffey, right? I knew them all. I knew a lot of Lou Silas. I knew them all. Ben, ben, Benny Medina, and this is what something you don't know that I actually kept going up, and I kept meeting 
leaders like yourself. And um, you are one of those people. So if they don't put you in the category of Al Bell or Vinny Medina, they need to stop. When people said, when you were saying you the godfather of hip hop, I, I said, you got to argue with him because I agree. You are one of the godfathers of hip hop because he gave us a chance when it was a transition that was happening through the techno world and the gangster world. You didn't like us cursing. You didn't like us doing what we were doing. You did not like none of that. Nope. And you were like, that is not entertaining. <laughs> 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 but Little did we know that was the second leg, and um, uh, you had all of us. So, cheers, brother. You What's did up? help. You remember your first song you did with me? Do I remember the first song? The first thing that you did with me. Um, Fuck all them hoes. No. You remember that? Fuck all them hoes? No, that is not it. Um, what was it? Um, our first song was Games. Oh, okay, right. right, right, right. And then we, we, we thought we were going to win uh, with uh, Roy Kaufman, and, and we lost the contest. And then we came to the Wrecking Crew, and then y'all put out Gang Bang, but Dre told me and Q that he would never leave, leave, uh, leave us by the wayside, and when y'all did Gang Bang, that song came from us, and when I gave you Shakespeare, Shakespeare was Cube's sister's boyfriend, right. so I've been giving you right. stuff for years. I've been giving everybody stuff for years. You didn't know how Shakespeare came into your life. He came in through me. Hmm. Okay. Did you know that? Okay. No, I didn't. How, did no, did how did Shakespeare become uh, taking clientele plates? Like, how did that happen? He was in stereo. Me. Group. me. I was helping you. You didn't even know it. <laughs> you was my OG. We thought that you was the leader. I was just bringing you artists. Like how I gave Dre artists. I gave everybody artists. I gave Calvin artists. I gave everybody artists. But when me and you and Barry, Barry is Cube's sister's boyfriend. That's how he got into the Wrecking Crew. To me. Okay. And he was too old to be in the stereo crew, so we changed our name to CIA, and then that's when Barry wasn't in it, because Barry was in, when you took us to uh, Epic Records, and uh, was it Larkin Arnold, all the stuff, you, hey man, you, you, you showed me some real, real stuff. And I, I loved it. But Barry went to y'all. But me and KD and, and, and Q, Dre didn't like the stereo crew, so he turned us into criminals in action. Or like, you didn't like criminals in action. You like caught in action, because we used to open up for you, and you didn't want criminals on your line. You didn't want that. So we had to be caught in action in CIA. Mm, okay. You didn't like criminal in action in front of you. So we changed the CIA to caught in action and um, you know we did uh, up under your lid uh, My Posse and uh, Illegal and those songs up under your lid and um, we that was a transition of life Alonzo and I, I really love what we went through I did too, man. Um, we got uh, a You got headphones? Nah. Okay, because we got an echo. I hear. I, 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 I do have some headphones, 
But hey, we can do this anytime you want to do it. This is just the first time we're talking. And I'm going to tell all y'all guys out there, just because you know what's going on, you might not know the real. And I, I wanted to come on your show to, to, to give you your flowers. And you did do that. We, we, you didn't have no understanding of what was going to happen, but you did uh, turn uh, Mr. Andre uh, into Dr. Dre. You did give him his name, and I do tell people you did that. Thank you, Doc. Yeah. Earlier, you said, you said something earlier. But I was Gene Bell. Good night. I just didn't beat people up. <laughs> huh? You said I was Gene Bell and Shug Knight, but I just didn't beat yeah. people. You just didn't beat people up. You just cut people off. As a Gemini, and that was just as worse. That was just as worse as getting beat up. If you couldn't go to the Eve at the Dark, you can go to Dudos. You can do what what Lonzo wanted you to do. You get cut off. So yes, you are one of those people. Okay. You just wasn't violent. Okay. But you are uh, Gene Griffin. You are uh, you are one of those guys. All right, Doc. I take All that. Right. I take that. I want to. I want to see you. And I, I. I don't know if I should turn this sideways so I can that. see this because it's mad small on my phone. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Hold on. We going to get it together, Lonzo. That's a better picture. That's a better picture. Uh-oh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, here we go. It's bigger on my phone. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that later. Ah. Yeah. It wasn't going to be there. Damn it. And I want to touch... Okay, fuck. I tried to turn it sideways. All right. What up, Lon Zizzy? Your name is Lon Zizzy now. Because we got an echo when I talk. So you tell your side of the story, guys. Do your thing. Go ahead. I want you to talk. I want you to talk. Because you got, because I got to echo. Well, give me a question, here. young one. Tell me what you want to hear, and I tell you, and I tell the people on your line how how important you were to give us a reason to want it to happen, and that and and you are the person that you know. People say you got to confide, you got to do what people say you should do. And uh, you you wasn't nice. You wasn't nice. You oh. wasn't cool. Oh. You didn't want to be our friend. You just wanted to see if we can do it. Ah. And that's why I tell ah. I tell people every day, like Lonzo was not our friend. And when I deal with people that deal with new artists, I say please don't make them your friend because then you're gonna stop. The, they're gonna have to start dealing with that. They, they personal situations and you didn't care about our personal situations you made us stand up it worked out it worked out to to some of us <laughs> yeah. hey. Hey. go so, ahead so, 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 i'll talk to you talk back talk about long beach You keep wanting me to go back to Calvin, don't you? you to what go, about I you? I want you to go to Calvin. Calvin. Go ahead. Nate, uh, I want you to talk about Jinx for a minute. Talk about Jinx. I want Jinx. to talk about how dope you made us. Even I, I, though you had a... Did you, did you see that situation where Buster Rhyme was talking about Chuck D and what Chuck D was doing to them, making them run and say raps at the same time. <laughs> like he thought that that was going to help them. But in your world, 
you you made us do shit. And we was opening up for uh the wrecking crew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you can say Ice Cube did open up for you. I'm just giving you your flowers. You really did it. And you you pushed a lot of us out here. The Warren G's, the Warren G was there. Um, um shout out to uh a Rose from Body and Soul. Uh, and and in that situation, and and all the people that you actually helped, Lonzo, you did help people not become rich, but you helped them understand what it means to be a good artist. And you really cared about that. You really cared about. You taught me about rehearsal, like mm. you know, before you do a show. You taught me that. So it was show we got to do rehearsal. I, appreciate I got that. that from you. You made that up. Didn't you do rehearsals every time? All those keyboards and all the shit that Dre and all of Yella and uh, a couple of people had to deal with, but you cared about a good performance. So you did instill that in all of us. I'll take that, Doc. Word up. Word up. I'll take that, Doc. And you I was still got it to this day. You were huh? always dancing. You still dance good? You still dance good? Nah. Come on, man. I, I, I had a rhythmic on, pattern. Man. I had oh. a rhythmic pattern. I still, I know how to, I know how to, you know, I, I'm an old guy, not as old as you. But I do know the rhythmic patterns. I can, uh, and I can whoop on somebody and ah, I know what they're doing. But that's only because I was a dancer at first. So I still know all the TikTok dances. I can do them, you know, unconsciously. <laughs> Man, it's, I'm really going to talk to you guys. I'm really glad to talk tell to you. Me, tell me something, Lonzo. What did you think of me when you first saw me and Dre brought me around? Don't say I was annoying. Don't say that. <laughs> I had what you, made me I had, different? I had you. I had, you, I had KD. I had KD. And Q. And Q. Right. KD was always laid back. Right. Q was always trying to get me to listen to some new, some new uh, music. Uh, new rhyme. Right. He was always dancing. And I was you, always hyper. You was all, okay, you was always hyper. You always had plenty of joy. Right. You always was climbing. That was your thing. You That's always take it off. Okay. Hey, can I tell you okay. something, Lonzo? Can I tell you something? Hey, you had a girl that was around you, and she was from New York, and she always talked in a New York swag, and that made me like New York girls because you had it like a, I don't know. You remember she had a yeah, a, a, she had a record. She she did put a record out, but yeah. I don't know who she yeah. was, but she talked like she was from New York. Do you remember that lady? Yes, you remember sir. her name? Yes, sir. That was Michelle. What was her name? Michelle. Michelle. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I liked her too. You lucky. Yes. I was on it. Yes. She just didn't like no 15 year old. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky. I, I, I gave her the most compliments I could ever give her. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a New York girl, and you was trying to help her with her career, and uh, you was helping out a lot, bro. You, Thank you helped us out a lot, and nobody ain't brought up that girl on your podcast. No, no. Right, I was there. Was that off of Maine before you moved over there? I don't want to talk about your direction, but. You know what I'm talking about, that right, right across the street from where we used to go get the food from, those yep. corners. 
Was that like Maine, San Pedro, or, or wherever? Where, where, where was that at? El Segundo. I mean, Maine, 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 that was your first house where you was renting out the equipment. And I keep telling right. people that right. you were renting out equipment like Calvin from um, Long Beach. Um, he's he's uh, one of those guys that was renting out the equipment. And, and they was like, Lonzo was a you know, what you was dealing with. And I'm like, no, nah, Lonzo was renting out his equipment before renting out equipment was renting out equipment. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Didn't you rent out your equipment when you was out, or was that Maine? Yeah, that yeah. first house? Yes, sir. Right. And nobody yeah. don't understand that. I'm like, yo, people keep talking about skating rings and and whoop, I was like, yo, Lonzo was dude that was actually renting that went written his equipment out. Yes, sir. Because you had a lot of yes, speakers sir. over there. People forget about that part, forget about that part I don't. I don't I forget. Long time. Long time. That's why I'm only on here to tell everybody what Lonzo did. We ain't talking about what he did wrong. We talking about what he did right. Just like with, with uh, Uncle Jam's armor. There was a line that was crossed in between Los Angeles. So either you was with Roger Clayton or you was with Lonzo. You was at Word on Wheels or you was at Skateland. We was at Skateland. So it's a line being drawn across. And Dr. Dre is all, all Lonzo world. So whenever you say Dr. Drake, you gotta throw Lonzo in there. But when you say Ice T, you gotta say Roger Clayton. So if anybody know the difference between Roger Clayton and Lonzo, it was a line slit in between Los Angeles, the Compton niggas and the rest of the niggas. Cause that's all you had to deal with, uh, Lonzo, is the Compton niggas. And they dealt with all the rest of the niggas. All right. I take that. Right. I take that. I know the history. And I know how I was trying to look for work. And if I wasn't with Rhyme Syndicate, they didn't like me. They didn't like me. Only because I came from the Wrecking Crew. And mm. I stand on that to this day. I came from the Wrecking Crew. I didn't come from Uncle Jam's arm. I came from Lonzo. All right, Doc. So you like the Jew right. going against KRS. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day in the New York game, you had your own Juice Crew. And the Juice Crew, your Juice Crew, wasn't that cool, but they ultimately turned into superstars. <laughs> Ain't cool. nobody bigger than what you brought in the game, Lonzo. Not a soul, Doc. I, a soul. I, hey, I wish I can see people talking, and I talk to Los Angeles hip hop. Oh, uh, you're on the phone. That's right. You can't see the chat room. Oh yeah, now nah, nah, I'm trying to move this shit over on the, on this part of my phone, but I can't see it because there's another part of my phone that's uh, like over here that I can't move over. And y'all, y'all, yo, when I put, moved it sideways, but it, it's all good, Lonzo. I'm fucking with you the long way. All right, don't matter. I'll see. Right. You. I want to do this again, Doc. You my old dude. Huh? I want to do this again. We get rid of that echo. I'm gonna uh, to get rid of the echo. I'm gonna figure out how to get rid of the echo. Hey, do you remember something? I remember you used to always have all the little fancy ladies. You used to have some fancy ladies. Lonzo had fancy ladies. Lonzo was ready for the world. He did have real bras. And made us look at his pretty ladies. I told y'all I, I like the girl from 
New York. He knew who I was talking about. But at the end of the day, Lonzo, you was doing it. You didn't know what the future was going to bring to us, but you did make us work for it. Okay. All day. I'll take that. I'll take that. You made us work for it. You might not get the credit for it, but I'm going to give you your flowers today. I wouldn't be where I was at, where I'm at, without you being mad at me all the motherfucking time. I wasn't mad when you sit down sometimes. Excuse me? I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad. Yes, you were mad. I was a kid. I, you took me to Lark and Arnold Epic Records at 15 years old. So we talking about what you what you would have dealt with a person that was 20. You talking about a person that was 14. Okay. Okay. And you took us to a place. So yeah, I could have been annoying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Only because I was a qui- inquisitive. Right. But you didn't know I was that inquisitive to turn into Sir Jinx, you know. No, like, I can't you know, I mean, so many records. I, I sold platinum records crazy. But it was out of your guidance that teaches me to tell new artists on what you taught me. I know you went through some things and you had to deal with that. But at the end of the day, you I still give you your flowers. You still did it. I'll take you care. had all of us in your hands. We was all over there. Warren G was over there. Snoop was over there. Uh, 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 Q was over there. DLC was over there. We, they, they all started around your... Because Dre wouldn't even have DLC if you didn't have Dr. Rock. So that that's something that people need to know. He would have never met DLC. If you didn't know Dr. Rock, I know the story. Okay. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Who was there before Dr. Dre? Dr. Rock. Dr. Rock. Okay. So Dr. Dre's name wasn't Dr. Dre before he came to you. What was it? What was it? I'm asking you. I didn't know. But you couldn't have turned him into Dr. Dre when you wanted the situation to look like the revolution with Dr. Fink. So Dr. Rock was there. Dr. Rock left. I know about the story about the, how Dr. Rock left. But Dr. Rock left, and then you didn't have no DJ. Dr. Dre, 17, you brought Ramel. He was Ramel at that point. And then you turned him into Dr. Dre. Hmm. Okay. Or tell, tell me I'm wrong. You're right. You're right. He was Ramel. He was Romeo at first. Mm, you're right. You're right. You're right. I know the history. You are absolutely. How did his name turn to Dr. Gray before he met you at 17? I knew when he met you at 17 because I already knew him. He was already Romeo. His name was Romeo at first. Oh, shit. And then when you needed a new oh, band member, shit. you changed his name to Dr. Dre. Wow. Wow. You don't remember that, Lazo? Now that you said it, yes. Now that you said it, yeah. How would he been Dr. Dre before Dr. Rock? That would have been a, co- a coinky dink. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, I need another nigga named Mix Master Mike. And another nigga named come, his name is Miss Master Mick. And then, yeah, that works. That don't, that don't, it didn't go that way. His name was Romeo at first. He was a pop locker. He was 17. I remember. His name is Ramel. Romeo was his name. And then you gave Dr. Dre. Hmm. Wow. Or tell me I'm wrong. Wow. I ain't trying to throw no smut on my cousin. That's my nigga. That's my real friend. That's my real... I talk to Dr. Dre all the time. But at the end of the day, I do know the, the history. And you have to tell me that I'm wrong. No. No. You're right. You're right. 
writing. You remember my name was Dr. Cone. Remember? Yep. That didn't have nothing to do with Dr. Dre. I came in with that name. I came in with Dr. Tone on Stereo Crew because me and Q, I got my name from Dr. Doom, like a, a comic book. But then you made Dre be Dr. Dre from Dr. Fink. That's who you wanted the Wrecking Crew to look like the revolution. That's why they had all that Paisley on at the time. So, yes. Dr. Dre got his name from Dr. Fink. All right. All right. Am I wrong or right? You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. I knew I was going to land on you when I came to talk to you. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong. I ain't saying no wrong. I'm just saying the truth. If anybody don't like the truth, then tell me to stop telling the truth. But at the end of the day, I had Dr. Tone. And I had to change my name to Sir Jinx because they started saying that I was Dr. Dre's nurse. Uh. And I changed my name. Uh. Right. I didn't like that. But it would have been dope because I would have been Dr. Tone, Dr. Dre, Dr. Rock, DOC. I would have been a part of that family because you know how these new rappers all have the same name. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Right. Like the new rappers, they all have the same first I B D C whoop. I B whoa whoa whoop. But you started the Dr. Dre shit. You started it. Yes. I'm trying to figure out something. Only because you like Purple out. Rain. You like Prince a lot. So yeah. you wanted the DJ yeah. to look like Dr. Fink. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I was there at 15 years old. I do remember. Yes. I wanted to wear, I wore them that the same outfit that that yellow wore on that album cover. I wore it to my homecoming. <laughs> like yellow let me wear his crazy outfit to my homecoming. that, <laughs> Those are some beautiful days, man. And a lot of people, I was real good in my high school just by being around you, Lonzo. You you, you uh, changed the way my high school went just because I knew when they played Dr. Dre on the end. Cause, do you remember what's Dr. Dre's first record? Do you remember? Doctor of the Century? Doctor of the Century? No. Are oh, the mixed records, right? Oh, the Dre first record was, I think, it's like a thousand speakers. It was like a, a record right before y'all started dealing with Daryl. I think his name was Daryl, the guy that was doing all the um, artwork for you guys. Okay. Okay. But he had a thousand speakers first, and then surgery came. So he had another gray record. Great. It's thousand speakers. That that Dre. First thing, I don't know if he did it with you, but that was his first record. And then surgery came. Okay. Okay. And then we start doing Juice and The Fly and all that. I've been a part of your life. Like, I can tell you everything you did, Lonzo. I know when The Fly came. You had a great memory, Doc. You had a great memory. Huh? You got a great memory. You got a great memory. I wasn't on drugs then. <laughs> so I remember a lot of stuff. Because you remember around you, you didn't allow drugs around you. You didn't allow slippery dudes. You didn't allow that. And then when I tell all the people in hip hop, Bonzo did not allow 40 ounce niggas around him. You did not allow that. Mm. And you found us as children, like 14, 15 years old. And we got a record deal. Do you know what happened with She's a Scad? Not a whole lot. Not enough. Not a whole lot. Not enough. Hey, do you know She's a Scag is in Michael Jackson's bad video? Yep. 
that's why we was mad at. It. I didn't do it though. I didn't do it though. But we gave up on why we were mad. But at and to this day, we are in Michael Jackson video, and it was five years later, and we blocked him out of being number one. I got a platinum plaque that say we blocked Michael. Michael Jackson out of number one on his history album. Now it's five years later. So we was in his after Thriller, he made bad. Right. And Alonzo right. record is in Michael Jackson's goddamn bad video. All y'all people go look at bad video when he walking in through the entrance part. And if you don't hear she's the sky, you don't have the right version, but we was a little mad at that. We was mad at like, how could we in Michael Jackson video and we don't get no bread? But we don't know what you were dealing with the business. We don't we don't know. We didn't know that. Hmm. So Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, Surgeon is in the bad video. And and Michael Jackson didn't even know that he was competing with Ice Cube hmm. when we did uh our record. He didn't know. We knew. Was it Lark and Arnold? Is those two different people or one person? One person. Ah, I thought they were two different people. I did too in the beginning. I did too in the beginning. <laughs> I thought Lark and Arnold was two two different people. Yeah. That was one person? Yeah. One person. One person. You got it, Lonzo. Thank you, Doc. And teach Thank these you, guys Doc. out here how to respect their place. Because regardless the time is changing, you still respected your place. You remember when we came in with our, came in your, your club with all that? that <laughs> I, I heard you talk a few times about how we bought, uh, you know, my rubber. And we started talking crazy. You know, he was like, no, no, no. You know, you get stuttering. You're like, no, 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 not in my place. <laughs> <laughs> That's not he was like, fuck you, bitches. Bitches ain't shit. He was like, hey, 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 hey. Not in, not in my motherfucking place. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some of your thing. And you, you, you called it my penis, but it wasn't my penis. It's called my rubber. Okay. And we did my rubber against uh, my Adidas. So right. th when when I made up to do parodies, because going in front of y'all with the music that me and Cube had, we would always tank in front of y'all. So in 83, when, because we, we was doing this before 83. So 83, when um, Lottie Dottie, just made the uh, or just made the motherfuckers up last night. So we started cursing. So this is the beginning of the cursing. So we went out in front of you guys, and uh, we just start cursing our face off. Wow! And you didn't wow. like that at all. You like what kind of entertainment is this? <laughs> you did not like the cursing, but uh, who knew? that the cursing was going to make the gangster world. And when we did all that cursing, it ultimately was the beginning of the, of the cursing word. And you actually put it out with my rubber um, BD sermon. You did put it out. You put it out as a, 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 a 12 inch. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. You put it out on a crew cut records. I probably got and that it. came after I got it. All right, Dad. But you let us I breathe. Die. But you let us breathe and you didn't agree. You did not agree with where we were going. And he was like, who are these niggas? Why they ain't got why they, why they curl ain't hanging over their forehead? And then and we, we, we brought something new and um when we did the uh my rubber BD Sermon, I'll Fuck Your Friend. We started doing parodies of music just to cut y'all. Because when the fly came on, 
or juice. Give me some juice or turn off the lights. Y'all, y'all would kill us. You know what I'm saying? When y'all didn't turn off the light, was it turn off the lights? I know, is I don't want to be lovers. That's the one y'all had the real epic situation. Hey, Doc, it's time to wrap up, man. I don't want to be lovers. Huh? Time to wrap up. Time to wrap up. Okay, cheers. Be in, man. Much love, Jinx. I'm going to let him go. Sorry, hey, folks, this is Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. I want to apologize for that, uh, for that echo. But as you can see, I just shut up let him do the talking because my man got a, got a memory for history. Like I don't in some cases, and I want to thank y'all for bearing with the with the uh, echo. Uh, that was a last minute interview. We didn't have time to check nothing, prepare nothing. That's and that's the beauty and the pitfall of being live. Sometimes you just got to go with what you got, and we never chance to check and make no adjustments. But I got him on the air, and y'all heard some uncut, uncut West Coast history from a brother who don't do podcasts who just called me. 15 minutes before I was about to go on the show. And hey, man, if you want me on there, I'll do it. And that's what we got, folks. Thank you all for watching. And like I say, every time I open this microphone and stand before this camera, from the West Coast to the East Coast and everything in between, folks, you're live with Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. And if you was expecting Orange Juice Jones, we're doing a special edition show Monday afternoon. All right? I will post it as soon as I get to, get the time. But Monday... He had the cast for the day, but Monday, I'm bringing you Orange Juice Jones for a special edition show, Doc. Much love, y'all. We out of here. Peace.